हम लोगों का बंदरेस ने मार दिया। Why has to slain one of Kailai's little ones? I I didn't mean to kill the little beast. He jumped on my shoulder as I came into the temple, and I struck him with my crop. Why camest thou here to defile our temple by thy presence? Well, the temple's open, isn't it? Take your hands off me, you swine! Silence! Thy speech is as profane as thine act. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're watching PNT. I'm your host, pondering the possible to preposterous proportions in order to pander to the populace. Up front this week, according to numerous online sources, residents of Colorado, Nebraska, and Wyoming have begun spotting mysterious swarms of drones moving through the night skies, and officials are baffled as to the cause. First reported on December 20th by the Phillips County Sheriff's Office in Colorado, the drones had been spotted flying in pairs and at times in large formations, moving silently and speedily from horizon to horizon. The drones themselves range in size, with some reports alleging larger craft the size of a small car. With hundreds of reports pouring in over three states, officials seem to be scrabbling to find some kind of explanation with theories ranging from private firms developing new tech to aliens. Debate has raged over the cause of the flights, with many pointing to the military as the most likely cause. Despite numerous sightings occurring near sensitive military bases housing nuclear missiles, such as F.E. Warren Air Force Base in Wyoming, Air Force officials have flatly denied any responsibility for being the origin or cause of the aerial intruders. Retired meteorologist Dan Carlson of Sydney, Nebraska has spotted the drones four times near his farm, flying in pairs at an altitude of 800 feet and moving rapidly from horizon to horizon. Curious and growing tired of the pernicious pests, Carlson hopped into his car and began to follow the drones, tracking them for over 10 miles. Apparently realizing that they were being followed, the drones increased their speed to over 60 miles per hour outpacing Carlson's vehicle and vanishing into the distance. While the resident of remote Sydney, Nebraska is dismissive of any extraterrestrial origins for the objects, Carlson reported that the lack of sound from the drone stood out in his mind, stating, It was the kind of night that if an airplane flies over at 30,000 feet, you hear it. No sound with these. With the military flatly denying any involvement, and despite ongoing investigations by the FBI, FAA, state and local agencies, no cause for the bizarre reports has yet been determined. Carlson, however, is not so sure about the lack of Air Force involvement, being quoted that, even if the military has plausible deniability with this, defense contractors might be involved. By the time they fess up to it, they'll have been in the sky for years. For PNT's part, we have to agree with Mr. Carlson's sentiments, but also have to point out the curious UFO reports filed during the Cold War by military personnel detailing sightings of numerous objects flying near and seeming to inspect our nuclear installations. Could these sightings be connected with the recent spate of activity? Questions that, for now at least, appear to have no answers. From aerial intruders to deadly divorces, the next story in our weekly roundup of the weird takes us to Iowa, where one man is hoping to cut his way through the red tape surrounding his divorce. Literally. Kansas resident David Ostrom recently filed a request to an Iowa court to allow the estranged couple to, quote, resolve our disputes on the field of battle, legally. In this case, with swords. Frustrated at the ongoing disputes over custody and property taxes between the two parties, Ostrom filed the unusual request, stating that his former wife, Bridget Ostrom, and her attorney, Matthew Hudson, had, quote, destroyed him legally. 
In his pleading, Ostrom attempts to validate his unusual request, stating that trial by combat has never been explicitly banned or restricted as a right in these United States, and asks the judge for a 12-week period so he could secure the proper Japanese samurai swords with which he would, quote, rend the souls from the bodies of his ex-wife and her attorney. In an interview with the Des Moines Register, Ostrom expressed his frustrations with the tactics used by his wife's attorney, stating, I think I've met Mr. Hudson's absurdity with my own absurdity, but did state that he would be open to the lawyer acting as his wife's champion in the combat. Mr. Hudson did not seem so keen on the prospect of having his soul rended from his body, however, arguing in his legal response to Judge Craig Dreismeyer that because a duel could end in death, such ramifications likely outweigh those regarding custody and property taxes, and asking for the dismissal of the request. The Honorable Judge also seems to be taking a middle ground on the matter, stating in his response from the court that he will not be giving a decision anytime soon, pointing out errors in both parties' motions to the court. Perhaps seeking to admonish the parties, Judge Drossmeyer flatly states that until the proper procedural steps to initiate a court proceeding are followed, this court will take no further action concerning any motion, objection, or petition filed by either party at this time. For PNT's part, while we can certainly appreciate Mr. Ostrom's frustrations at the complexities of the legal system, we suggest that it might be better to draw inspiration from Titanic, rather than Kill Bill. Just saying. We'll be back in just a few moments with the final part of our program, but first, a word from our sponsor. This is aluminum. Nature made it light. Alcoa made it plentiful and low in price. This is aluminum, a new and better way to protect food, to cook the tastiest Christmas dinner you ever had. Wherever foil, an Alcoa aluminum product is today's number one food saver. It prevents shrinkage during cooking, seals in food flavors, It saves work, too, with no messy pans to scour. Used in millions of households, it keeps stored food fresher longer. There will be more and more wherever foil next year when our country's defense needs have been met. Wherever foil for the kitchens of America. Aluminum from the ever-expanding facilities of America's foremost producer, Alcoa. Aluminum Company of America. Welcome back, and remember, no matter who you are or wherever you are, you can cover anything and everything with wherever aluminum foil. Why, it would be perfect to cover your coffee and keep it piping hot inside one of our exclusive PNT mugs available from our Teespring store. You can sit back in a comfy PNT t-shirt and your stylish new aluminum hat confident that whether it's radiant ovens or mind control rays, wherever foil has got you covered. Get yours today. For the final part of our weekly Roundup of the Weird, PNT is pleased to bring you a remarkable UFO sighting drawn from the MUFON database. Filmed on January 6th, the video appears to show a large, cigar-shaped craft moving rapidly through the skies over Cranberry, Pennsylvania. Let's have a look at the footage.
mean, it's zooming. It has zero exhaust, zero anything. No, oh, it's not. Wow.
So what was the large, cigar-shaped craft filmed moving at high speeds through the skies over one Pennsylvania town? Let's run down the possibilities. The objects in the video are clearly not birds, clouds, stars, meteors, or most atmospheric phenomena. We can also rule out flares, both aerial and lens. So how about balloons? While balloons are a possibility, there are several factors to consider in this case. Most commercially available party balloons would not be of sufficient size to match the proportions of the object in the video. Weather balloons are obviously the wrong shape and would deform due to the rapid speed of the object. There are cylindrical balloons, such as solar balloons, that match the shape, but again in this case would be subject to deformation from the speed and air currents unless held in place by a rigid framework. For example, the Ascender research platforms. Even so, research platforms are generally tethered to one location or move slowly and do not possess a motive source of power as the craft in the video appears to have. So, with our balloon explanation deflated a bit, we can turn our attention to the next possibility. Drones. Drones certainly move under their own power and at high rates of speed, and they could easily match that of the object. The shape and the size, however, are not a match. Commercially available drones are far too small to account for the object, and while there are much larger drones, including military UAVs or unmanned aerial vehicles, they do not match the cylindrical shape of the object. That's leaving aside the obvious oddity of a large, unmarked military drone proceeding through the sky in the middle of the day for no apparent reason. Not completely out of the question, but let's not jump the gun just yet. So, let's move on to the next item on our list aircraft, be they private or commercial. Helicopters are clearly out, so let's turn to the airplanes themselves. As is our standard procedure, PNT searched for any airports near the sighting location, and found no shortage of likely candidates. There are at least four airfields within the sighting area, but none of them are capable of supporting a craft of this size, serving only small private planes and one Seneca airfield being utterly abandoned. In fact, there is only one airport nearby capable of supporting a craft of this apparent size, but more on that in a moment. So what about the issue of size? How can we tell how large the object in the video really is? An excellent question. Determining the size of an object in the air is extremely difficult without any static foreground elements to compare against. A building, a tree, streetlights. All elements of relatively standard size that can serve as a basis for comparison. When a video contains no other elements to judge against, it leaves us with only two possibilities. Either we are looking at a small craft close to our viewpoint, thus appearing to be a much larger object, or the reverse, a large craft at a far distance, making the object seem small. Really, without at least one reference point, it's impossible to determine size. This is yet another reason why you should not zoom in when filming an object. Always hold your phone sideways and keep the surrounding landscape in view. Trust that your camera will record the object, even if you don't see it on the screen. In this case, whether through accident or design, the witness provided us with a frame of reference for at least part of the video, as well as a possible clue to the location of the incident, in this case, an Aldi grocery store. So, by using the wall and roof of the store as a size reference, we can judge the relative size of the object as at least as large as a commercial aircraft, roughly 150 to 200 feet long. Altitude is a bit harder to figure out, but given the approximate size, we can safely estimate no less than 20,000 feet. The higher the altitude, the smaller the object will appear, so we feel that this is a safe guess, and it also closely matches the standard cruising altitude of 30,000 feet. So, we can see that the object is both large and at a high altitude not a smaller object at a closer distance and altitude. 
This brings us back to the possibility that the object in the film may be a commercial airplane. The size and altitude match, the body of the plane is certainly cylindrical, and there is one airport within the area that serves aircraft of that size, Erie International Airport, which lies only 50 miles from the sighting location. Using the clues left us in the witness statement and in the video, we were able to find the exact position and angle that the witness filmed the craft, and thus determine the direction that the craft was moving, towards the northwest and towards Erie International. Now, while this would seem to close the case on identifying the object, there were still several things about it that bothered us. First was that the object made no sound. Even a jet cruising at altitude leaves a sound wake as it passes, the Doppler effect. You've likely heard it countless times and not even realized it. A plane passes overhead and then you hear the sound. The problem is that there is no such noise on the video. Second, as noted by the witness, there is no visible exhaust or contrails, which do not conclusively disprove the object being an aircraft, but does add another layer to an already curious case. The last problem we found was that if this were an airplane, under magnification there should be some sign of the wings and of the vertical and horizontal stabilizers. Closely examining the object reveals no sign of wings, but this could be caused by looking at a plane from the side, thus causing the wings to blend into the fuselage. But there's one final detail that might be the most important fact against the object being an aircraft, the utter lack of a horizontal or vertical stabilizer, both of which are necessary to maintain stable flight. No matter how much we looked, we could find no sign of either on the object, yet it clearly moves rapidly and steadily through the skies, something that no aircraft should be incapable of doing. That would bring us to military craft, and the never-ending rabbit hole of black projects, secret programs to develop cutting-edge aircraft and technology in order to ensure air dominance. Is it possible that the military has developed a craft capable of performing as the object in the video does, without apparent control surfaces. Curiously, there are descriptions and rumors of a large cylinder-shaped craft known as the Sky Dreadnought, whose alleged purposes range from surveillance to troop transport. That the military develops secret projects is no secret, but without official confirmation, this possibility remains tantalizing and only leads to more questions. If this is a military craft, what is it? And why is it moving at a high speed over a remote area of Pennsylvania? We may never know. So, with our list of possibilities dwindling, we're now free to turn our attention to the boundless possibilities presented by the unknown. What if the object recorded over Cranberry, Pennsylvania earlier this month is exactly what it appears to be? an unidentified craft capable of performing maneuvers currently beyond our technology. What would its power source be? How does it manage to move so rapidly at altitude without lifting surfaces of any kind? And then there are the more intriguing questions. Who created this technology and why is it here? As we've seen over the past several years, a growing pattern has emerged of cigar-shaped craft such as this one appearing worldwide, and almost always over remote areas that are often wildlife refuges or protected sanctuaries. Northwestern Pennsylvania certainly fits the bill, with the Allegheny National Forest, Elk State Forest, Sproul State Forest, Susquehannock State Forest, and Tioga State Forest all located within 100 miles of the sighting. Is it possible that what we are seeing is another link in this chain of sightings? Why would these large cigar-shaped craft choose to visit these areas instead of large population centers? Could the creators of these vessels be monitoring the effects of our enormous impact on the environment? Or even going a step farther, collecting specimens of our flora and fauna while they still can. With hundreds of species rapidly going extinct due to the effects of pollution and global climate change, 
Is it really that far-fetched to believe that an alien race, knowing all too well the rarity of such lush water worlds as ours, might be cataloging and preserving these endangered species against our future need? Will they perhaps, when we have learned to reverse the damage we've done to our planet, reveal themselves openly and help us reseed our biomes with the inheritance that they have kept safe in the hopes that we would learn to understand their necessity and their fragility? Or are their motivations darker? Gathering intelligence on our world in order to more easily assume control of it before stripping it of resources, mineral, plant, animal, and even, perhaps, human. Could this be the purpose behind the phenomena of cattle mutilations and alien abduction? And if so, are we able to do anything at all to prevent it? More to the point, would we not do the same to other worlds? With our history of exploiting new lands, new resources, of conquering indigenous peoples, is it really that far-fetched to imagine that we would and will do the same upon reaching the level of technology that will allow us to reach our greedy fingers out into space? Is it such a stretch to imagine that there are other races, other intelligences that have done the same and may have cast their eyes on our small blue globe? An uncomfortable mirror for the human race to peer into as we move into this most critical time in our evolution. Will we choose to become the benevolent protectors of our own home or the ruthless exploiters of other worlds? Curious questions to ponder the next time you look up to the skies and the wonders and terrors that lie beyond. But whether or not the strange object filmed speeding over the skies through Cranberry, Pennsylvania earlier this month was a commercial jet heading home to Erie International Airport, the product of a secret military project, or something else entirely, we'll leave up to you to decide. Sound off in the comments section below with your thoughts. That's it for this time, faithful viewers. Be sure to click like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified when PNT presents your next portion of The Paranormal. I'm your host, reminding you to keep an open mind. Because a closed one shuts out the truth. While we're standing here guessing, she's getting away. Boyer, yeah. Fancy. Don't worry. She won't get far. I've attended to that. It looks like everybody is handling this case but me. <laughs> <laughs> ah!